Hello everybody. The question we're going to answer today is uh, you hear the word anxiety and uh, like I'm sure you've heard it too. So uh, when do you said go from layer like uh, stress being worried to having anxiety disorder? You like it? Yeah, honestly this is a really good question because um I think most of us are familiar with stress. It's um you feel very tense, you feel like um you know, you're, you're in a crunch situation, you've got to, you have to put a lot more energy into it, which is analogous to daily anxiety. Um, and I say this because anxiety is a normal experience. We do experience anxiety every day. Um, and it's for simple things and it's an appropriate response, right? You could be, you can be anxious about falling in the Grand Canyon ahead of you if you're standing on the cliff. That's reasonable anxiety because your stress and worry and fear are appropriate to the situation that you're facing. Um, you're anxious about not hitting the people who are crossing the street, who are jaywalking in front of you and you're driving. That's, that's reasonable anxiety. And that's fine. That kind of stress, worry, fear, it's just a state of apprehension. And I would say it becomes an anxiety disorder when the magnitude of that response, that fear response is, uh, not proportionate to the situation you're facing. So if someone feels like they're going to die, they can't think straight, they're, um, they're super stressed out about, uh, you know, going outside, going to social situations and, or uh, about general life experiences, or they feel like if, they, if a spider comes near them, they're going to die. They're super stressed out. Their heart rate's through the roof. That's when their fear is disproportionate to the situation they're in. And that's when I would say it becomes an anxiety disorder. How does that sound, actually? So, uh, that sounds really good. So, I want to ask you more questions on that. So, like, uh, you know, with, like, the spider thing. So, like, when someone has anxiety, like, uh, do they also, like you said, you know, disproportionate to the situation. So, like, do they also understand, they believe that it is disproportionate, but, like, they can't, like, they can't help it. Is that how they feel? And second uh, one is, uh, you know, like, so there's, like, the stressed part. And then there's like the overthinking part. And then there's like the feeling, the emotion part. And so like of all these things, if you just say those words, you're like, okay, no, that's not anxiety. But you're like uh, somewhere in between you're saying anxiety is there. So like, uh, like tell me more about those two things. People with phobias uh, tend to know that they have um, an extreme irrational fear um, or yeah, they might know it's irrational, but it's not something that's within their control just because they think um, they're aware that this isn't the best thing to do doesn't mean that it's just that easy to come overcome because their phobia is a genuine, um, extremely life interfering fear response that it's hard to overcome. Um, it's not as simple as saying like, I know donuts are not good for me. And then I said, avoiding said donut. It's, it's not that simple. Um, so uh, that's the answer for the first one. And the second one was like, where does anxiety come in the different experiences that a person has? Uh, anxiety has symptoms in a variety of ways, right? It's, it's cognitive, the way you're thinking, um, your emotions, it's physiological, your heart rate, your sweating, your stomach feels like it's like butterflies in it. You feel nauseous. Um, it's, it's perceptual, uh, a little bit, I would say, um, how you see things, um, you know, you might feel dizzy, uh, your vision might start to blur in extreme cases. So, uh, all of these on milder scales are um, things that you would experience with anxiety. Um, and it's when it's, it's super extreme that it's an anxiety disorder. One example that I can give from my experience is um, where, I, where I work or where I study, a lot of people are on skateboards and they're going on the sidewalk right next to me. And if I don't anticipate them coming and I suddenly hear the skateboard coming, my, my extreme fear is I don't want them crashing into my ankles. Cause I've had razor scooters when I was younger, like hit my ankles and it hurts. And I don't want that pain. So uh, whenever I hear a skateboard coming near me, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the side of my body that's closer to whichever side the skateboard or is coming on tenses up more. Um, I feel like it's it, like my body temperature, like suddenly spikes. Uh, and um, I like, concentrate my attention on my ankle and it's like it's like an immediate like I, I am aware of the physiological reaction I have to my fear of I don't want to get hit by the skateboard and uh so I'd imagine that it like that that is 
a normal anxiety response. Um, but what is abnormal and abnormal is just defined by different cultures, right? So it's we're we're saying that you're for an anxiety disorder, your reaction is disproportionate. But what if in a certain culture it is appropriate um, to feel a certain way? It's different different cultural experiences. That's actually a really good question. Uh, you know, like when is it anxiety? When is it like you just choose to do it for like your own reasons? Yeah. And another cultural experience that people could consider or misconstrue with anxiety might be um, introversion, because people, you know, a lot of traits of introversion might align with traits of anxiety and social anxiety. I think we should talk about that more in our next video. Okay, sounds good. See you then. Oh, you're still here? Well, thanks for getting to the end of the video. Hey, while you're still here, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get new updates when we post videos. Also, make sure to check out these equally exciting videos as well. Have you pressed it yet? Come on, you have five seconds left. Three, two, press it now.